Okay, this is the second part of the low poly tank tutorial. And in this section, we'll be doing the basic modeling. So I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I'll make the first few shapes and then I'll time lapse the other bits and then pause it when it gets to something new or perhaps slightly complicated. So I have my basic cube in the middle here and I'm in front view uh, with one on the numpad and side view is three in the numpad and we got that set up with our tank in the background. So we need to reshape our model to coincide with the tank. So back into front view, a handy tip is to press Z on your keyboard and that will take you to wireframe mode. And then you can see your model in the background. So I'm gonna click on the top face, and bring it down to that level across there where there's a change in the model and this bottom bit down a touch. Click on the top face again and press E to extrude and pull it up. Remember, you must have clipping turned on. Otherwise, if I go into 3D view, you'll end up with a face on the inside. Back to front view with one on the numpad. So let's scale the face in. S for scale and bring it in. And there we go. But remember, when you press scale, it's doing it in side view as well as front view. It looks like it's scaling just in the x-axis, but it's actually scaling in both axes. Okay, so I'm in side view, three on the numpad, and I'm gonna reshape it so it looks like the image. Let's click the front face, pull that out. I'm gonna to go to edge mode by pressing control tab and coming up with edge mode there, and then selecting this edge here. I just pressed A, then B for box select. Otherwise, it's very difficult to select that shape. If I press A to deselect, and try and select that line in there, it's very tough. But if I press A and B, or I could go to perspective view, select the edge, and then go to side view and pull it across. Okay, a few ways of doing it. This time I'm gonna do it in vertex mode, so control tab, vertex mode, and I'm gonna select these two vertices by pressing A to deselect everything, B to box select, box select that, and grab it into position. G to grab, I'll do the same on this angle here. A, B to box select, G to grab, and move it into position. And the last one I'm gonna put down the bottom here. So A to deselect, B to box select, and G to grab. And we'll pull that down to there. Okay, so we've got our basic shape. That's what it looks like in 3D. Z to go back to solid mode. You've got those options down here as well wireframe, solid mode. Let's go back to front view. Okay, so that's our basic shape in the middle there. I'm gonna go back to side view and put the door on just here. Now the simplest way to do this is to add a cube and place it in that section. I don't think we want a door on both sides, so I have to come out of edit mode, back into object mode to add my door. If I add the door in edit mode, it will add it to this shape and then it will get very confusing. So into object mode with tab, I place my cursor there, shift A to add, mesh, and then cube. I'll scale that down. I'll go into edit mode, and I'll grab these two vertices here, so A, B, and move them up. Then we have to go into front mode, and it's in the wrong place, of course, so we'll bring it across. Scale it by the X axis, so S then X, and then rotate it. Because I'm in this, front view it will rotate around the y-axis which is going away from us and towards us now if I go to solid mode we've got a door now I'm doing another few bits in time-lapse because they're just adding basic shapes and pulling around the vertices okay here I'm doing something slightly different so I'm still in edit mode and I want a new loop cut just here so I press ctrl R for a loop cut and then left click to position it and when I'm happy I left click again and now I can grab these two vertices with A and B and move them up. Let's go to perspective view to see how that's working and at this point I'm going to select the front face by control tab press face and select the front face while in perspective mode. Back to side view and press E to extrude and pull it out and then I can scale that down and pull it down so it's all level. For the tank hubcaps, I'll use the same technique of adding a cube and scaling it, then reshaping it. And in this case, I'm reshaping it to the front, and then I'm gonna extrude this edge out like this. 
So I'll rotate this, extrude it out, G to grab, and rotate this R, extrude, G to grab, and rotate with R. And that's one way of making the hubcap. The problem with that is that we've got variable thicknesses. It's slightly thicker here than it is there. So that's not the best way of creating it. An easier way and probably quicker way would be to use a plane and the solidify modifier. Click on the card in the top right hand corner or the link below to find out more about this. But for now I'm going to keep it nice and simple so that you can quickly create a tank or any other low poly vehicle. Now I'm adding a cylinder for the cannon and I want to lower the vertices around the cylinder to about 8. So you can still see it's a cylinder but it keeps that low poly style. As soon as I scale it or move it around I lose those options so you need to do that right at the beginning. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, scale it down, G to grab and then scale in the Y axis. Shift D to duplicate, move it across scale in the Y axis and then scale and press Shift Y so it doesn't scale in the Y axis but does change in the X and Z. We can use the same cylinder for the lights so Shift D to duplicate, bring it down and we'll go into edit mode, grab the end face and scale that down. Now we have this front section sticking out here so I'll create a cube for that. Remember to go back into object mode And let's move this light into position now. In a moment I will copy across uh, these objects and the tracks, but there's quick ways to do that and I'll show you that in a moment. We'll start on the caterpillar tracks. Let's do the cylinders first and then we can draw around the cylinders with our track. So Shift A to add new cylinder. I'm already on 8 vertices so it should be the same and then rotate it and place it into position. I'll modify this first then duplicate it for the others. I'll go into solid mode, move it out so I can see it and now into edit mode. Grab the end face, extrude it and just right click so it ends up in exactly the same place and you've got the faces around the edge. Then if I scale it down I create these edges here and then I can extrude it right click and pull it into the x-axis and this creates this sort of wheel looking thing. Back into object mode, now back into side view, wireframe mode, shift D to duplicate that and change the size accordingly. Now to add some variation to these you might want to go back into edit mode, grab that middle face and pull it out, maybe the same on this one. Now we need to create our tank tracks We'll create one track and then duplicate it around. So a simple cube, scale it down and there's our track. Go to front view to move it into place. We also need to move these into place so I can shift select these. And let's go back to our tank track just there. Let's go to side view. Now the quick way to do this is to add an array along a path. We draw a path and then array our object along the path. Click on the card or the link below to find out more about setting up arrays. The uncomplicated way is to literally duplicate, move it into place and you just keep doing that all the way around. Shift D, G and rotate and G to grab. Also the advantage of doing the array method is that if you want to animate it, it is a lot easier. But if you're new to Blender, you might just want to quickly make models and not complicate things by using arrays. And they can be a bit confusing. And there we go. There's our tank tracks. Now for the exhaust. Shift A, add a cylinder, scale it down, rotate it, now because I've already rotated it and I want to scale it this way, that's quite awkward. But what you can do is press S then Z twice to scale it locally. So that's the local Z axis. You can access that down here where it says local. 
and you can see it's local to that shape and then you can use the gimbals along here if you want but if you press the axis twice it will go to local mode instead of global mode now I want to create a couple of sections and it might be handy to go to local mode for the duplication then I can grab it on the local Z axis and scale it down in the local axis like so now let's go into edit mode grab the end and we'll zoom in a bit and we want to curve this around here now you can press E to extrude move it out rotate it there's a quicker way if you hold down control and left click it rotates around like that when it's rotating around it can change the size slightly so you might want to adapt that so go back to global mode and scale in the z-axis if I go to edge select mode I can select an edge loop by pressing alt and right click and then I can scale in the z-axis okay let's put an end to our tanks turret in the same way we've done the wheels here so I'm selecting that end face extruding it scaling it down extruding it again and pulling it in do the same with the light now we want to get these objects from this side to the other side for this one it's simple shift D and move it across let's go to front view for this now for the tank tracks let's go to front view again into wireframe mode and C to circle select all these items when you use circle select be careful because you may already have a selection available and in circle select I left click to select things middle click to deselect things and then right click to come out of circle select mode shift D to duplicate right click to put them in the same place drag them across in the X axis and lastly scale X minus 1 will flip the direction so if I go back to solid mode you can see it's flipped the direction of my tank tracks and then duplicate the exhaust and move it across now you can add a few details at this point depending on your preference but that's entirely up to you you might want to add your own style or character to it the very last thing that I'd like to do is add some smoke the style that I use is an icosphere so shift a mesh icosphere scale it down and then duplicate it and scale it up slightly and then hopefully that will look like smoke coming out of the exhausts duplicate them and rotate them around the Z to add a bit of variation in the last section we will be adding color and setting up the lights for rendering 